This 14-year-old girl took the life of her disabled sister while she was sleeping. Just days before the horrific act, she went viral on TikTok in what are now considered to be some of the most chilling videos ever uploaded to the platform. Welcome back to Twisted Minds. My name is James, and today we're going to be talking about the case of Claire Miller. Today we're surrounded by technology, and it seems like anyone and everyone can have a large social media following of some sort. However, oftentimes, with any level of fame, there can come a lot of misfortune, and that was the case with Claire Miller. Yeah, this case is going to be pretty messed up, so buckle up, because this one is a doozy. Claire Miller was born in 2007, making her just 14 years old at the time that changed her life forever. Her parents, Mark and Marie Miller, did everything they could to provide their children with the best lives possible. The two got married in 1997, 10 years before Claire would be born. The two eventually settled down in Mannheim Township, Pennsylvania, where they decided to start a family. Claire's older sister, Helen, would be born in 2002. Her birth was a shock for the entire family because the moment she was born, doctors began to suspect that she was suffering from some sort of medical disorder. She wasn't able to interact the other way babies do, and it seemed as though she had trouble moving certain parts of her body. They would soon learn that Helen was born with cerebral palsy. I'm sure that most of us are familiar with this disorder, but in case it's new to you, cerebral palsy is a permanent movement disorder that affects its victims from birth. Cerebral palsy can cause its victims to have very stiff muscles, with many patients being unable to move their arms completely, oftentimes feeling as though their arms or legs are locked in a certain position. Because of this, many patients, like Helen, are confined to a wheelchair for most of their lives. Thankfully, the disorder doesn't necessarily have to get worse as the patients age, so long as they are receiving proper medical care. And it seems like Helen was getting the best care money could buy. Her parents did everything they could to make sure that Helen had every opportunity to enjoy life to her fullest. After just a few short years, Claire Miller would be born in 2007, meaning Helen was about four or five years old at the time. She would grow up like your average child in the late 2000s, and it seems like her life was going perfectly normal. She had friends at school and was leading a very satisfying life. In fact, her parents were so concerned about her getting a proper education that they enrolled her in Lancaster County Day School, one of the most expensive private schools in the area. Mark and Marie felt as though they were doing the best they could for their children. However, nothing could prepare them for the tragedy that was about to overtake their lives. Over the course of one short night, their lives would change forever. It was the evening of February 21st when Helen Miller decided to head off to bed. She had already done her nightly routine of changing clothes, getting washed up, and brushing her teeth. She would make her way into her room and tuck herself into bed, just like she did every other night. As many teens often do, Helen felt as though her bedroom was one of the safest and secure locations in her life. However, Claire had other things in mind, and soon enough would exploit her sister's vulnerability in the worst way possible. Claire was never considered to be a troubled child. On the surface, she seemed to be a well-put-together young woman, though in more recent months, she had been spending a lot of time on social media, particularly websites like TikTok and YouTube, where she amassed a decent following of users who wanted to tune in to her everyday life. She would often post vlogs to YouTube in which she would film her daily routine and share her life with her viewers. On top of this, she managed to find between 20 and 30,000 followers on TikTok after several of her videos started going viral. However, something was clearly brewing deep within Claire, a feeling she couldn't quite shake. It seemed that her violent nature would finally awaken on the evening of February 21st. That night, Helen had tucked herself into bed, and Claire snuck out of her bedroom and headed toward the kitchen. Once there, she searched around, 
hoping to find a pair of rubber gloves. She finally found them, slipped them onto her hands, then continued with her disturbing plan. She spent a few short moments in the kitchen before she decided to reach into one of the drawers and remove a sharpened knife. According to reports, without a second thought, she then headed directly toward Helen's bedroom. Helen had no idea what was about to take place, as she had been deep in sleep at this point. Granted, this was around 1 a.m., so no one in the home was awake when Claire decided to carry out her vicious and cruel attack. As she entered Helen's bedroom, she slowly approached her sister's bed and attacked Helen by jabbing her in the neck. Though this wasn't the end of her attack. She proceeded to attack her sister several more times before deciding that was enough. She struck her one final time in the neck before quietly exiting her bedroom and making her way to the front door. By this point, the sheets had turned a crimson red, and it became very clear that Claire had pushed Helen to the point of no return. As Claire reached the front door, she casually exited the home, making sure not to wake her parents. Then she headed down the front porch steps. She removed her rubber gloves and, according to investigators, seems to have tried to clean the blood off her hands using the snow that covered the ground. We don't know why she chose to do this instead of washing her hands in the sink inside, but I think we can assume that it was probably done to avoid waking up her parents, but that's just a guess. She would leave her bloody gloves on the snow-covered ground, making her way toward the front porch steps. It would seem that, at this point, the reality of what she had done had just began to sink in. She began to get confused and disoriented, unsure of what she had just done and concerned about her actions. Then, after all this effort to keep quiet and not wake her parents, she did the unthinkable. She called the police. When the dispatcher answered the phone, she explained what she had just done. Needless to say, officers were on their way to her home and immediately arrived within minutes. When police began to pour into her driveway, they noticed that Claire was covered in blood from head to toe. Her shirt had been soaked with blood, as well as her pants. According to one officer, the blood was so heavily staining her clothing that it was literally dripping off as she stood outside on the cold winter night. Officers then say that Claire revealed her dark deed to them in one simple sentence. I stabbed my sister. At first, police felt as though Claire was mistaken. They felt that, in reality, Clara had been left in shock by something that took place within the family home. They couldn't believe that a young girl like Claire would be capable of such an unspeakable act. They did their best to console her and get more information out of her. And it was at that moment that she directed officers to investigate her older sister's bedroom. Inside, they found Helen's bed, covered in blood with the murder weapon still jutting out of her neck. As police began to search Helen's room, the truth of what had just taken place became shockingly clear. The evidence was apparent as ever, and officers knew right away that Claire was to blame. When they first approached Helen's bed, they found that she was lying face up, covered under sheets and a pillow. One of the first responding officers removed the pillow that covered her face and found that the murder weapon was still lodged in Helen's body. Even though it seemed very apparent that there was no hope for Helen, officers decided to do their best to try to resuscitate the young girl. Though after many failed attempts, they realized that their efforts had all been in vain. By this point, Claire and Helen's parents had both awoken and had learned about what had taken place. They were completely blindsided by the news and couldn't understand what would lead Claire to do such a horrible thing. To say that they were left in a state of shock would be a dramatic understatement. When they went to bed the previous evening, they were a loving, happy family of four. Now, after being woken up in the middle of the night, they learned that their family had been torn apart in the blink of an eye. One of their beautiful young girls was taken from this world, and the other was removed from the household and placed in custody while awaiting trial. It was every parent's worst nightmare, yet also a scenario that no one could have ever been prepared for. As officers headed outside of the home to arrest Claire for what she had just done, they claimed that she showed no sign of remorse. Instead, she just kept chanting, I killed my sister. The unfortunate part about this is how vague officers were in their report. We don't know if Claire was chanting this in a way to show she was proud of what she had done, or 
if she was just repeating this phrase in a state of shock. I would love to believe the later, but given how vicious the crime was that she had just committed, we really can't be too sure. After Claire confessed to the crime, she was taken to the local police station and placed in an interrogation room. Even though she had just given a confession at the scene, police needed to make sure that she wasn't being pressured into confessing to the crime. As it would later turn out, there was no pressure. Claire had simply decided to claim the life of her sister for virtually no reason at all. In fact, that's what makes this case so insane. No one has any idea what Claire's motives was for taking the life of her sister. Police have not revealed if she explained the situation to them in private, and her attorney is not making any comments about the situation either. As soon as the details about the case were released publicly, Claire found an additional 10,000 followers on TikTok. In the end, she ended up with 32,000 TikTok followers, but TikTok would eventually shut down her account after they claimed that she violated the terms of service. Claire made her way to court in March of 2021. Obviously, cases of this nature can be tied up in court for a very long time. So, we don't have many more details at this moment. What makes this case even more tragic is that it seems as though Claire will never have a chance of bettering herself or turning her life around after what she did. Even though she is only 14 years old, she is being tried as an adult. According to several news outlets, this means that she could be given a life sentence or even be given the death penalty. Regardless of where you stand on the case and regardless of whether or not Claire will be sentenced to life or death, it is truly tragic to see two young lives that were completely thrown away. We will simply have to wait and see how this case plays out to know what kind of punishment Claire will be facing. At the end of it all, we're still left with so many questions that may never be answered. There's been a lot of speculation about Claire's motives. Since the crime took place, some of her friends have spoken out about Claire and claim that she had always seemed to have a fascination with death. Her friends claim that they feared Clay may have been suicidal or potentially homicidal. However, her parents deny these claims and say that her younger friends don't truly understand what they're saying. Her parents say that Claire was always a happy child and showed no signs of being depressed and certainly no signs of being violent. However, there is a much darker theory about why Claire did what she did. According to Daily Mail, there is a chance that Claire claimed the life of her sister because she simply wanted the attention. As I'm sure you know, having a disabled sibling is not easy for anyone involved. Having a serious disability like cerebral palsy requires a lot of time and care from your parents. So much of their daily lives were dedicated to making sure that Helen was taken care of. This meant that they didn't have as much time to give Claire the attention she may have wanted. Another spin on this theory is that Claire understood how much time and effort her parents put into taking care of Helen. So, she felt as though claiming Helen's life may have been an easy way out for everyone involved. On top of this, it was rumored that her parents were dealing with money issues at the time as well, so it's possible that she may have claimed Helen's life to remedy that situation too. Obviously, these reasons to take one's life make absolutely no sense to the regular person, but we're clearly not dealing with someone normal here. Truth be told, we will likely never know why Claire did the horrible things that she did. It is almost certain that she will now sit in a prison cell for the rest of her life. It's not uncommon for cases like this to have a silver lining. However, in the case of Claire Miller, there is no silver lining. There is no brighter side to this situation. There is only hurt, sorrow, and tragedy. Thanks for tuning in to Twisted Minds. That was the case of Claire Miller. Oh, and why don't you go ahead and click on another one of the videos on your screen to see another one of our videos.